let's get going. Have you ever checked the source code of your view or Noxt application and found these weird comments? Yep, HTML comments with a square bracket inside. What's that? And can we remove them to improve our performance? Let's find out now. In the Q&A session, I recently got asked about exactly that. What these pair of matching comments with open, close square brackets are, what they're doing, and if we can remove them. Because, well, more elements on the page means more kilobytes, right? Or in this case, probably bytes. But if you have like 800 or 1,000 of these matching pairs, ah, that's not that nice. And I even have them on my site. If you check the HTML that's sent for the landing page straight away, on my website, which is also open source, we will even see almost 150 matches here for just the comment with that square open bracket. And it means almost the same amount if we change it around. So yes, once again, 149. And the question is, do we even need them? Is this something that view or next adds? Or maybe it's just a shortcoming of one of the components I wrote? And can we remove them if, well, they're just comments, right? The answer to all of them is, yes, they're needed. They come from you when using SSR. So also when using Nux, they're there. And believe me, no, you won't want to get rid of them because otherwise your app might break. There are a few alternatives, but they are not really better than what we have here because they have a special use case. For that, I've had a little play playground. We'll have a look at how things are rendered during SSR and what the alternatives are. But I tell you already, if you have some kind of script that goes through your HTML and improves it by removing leftover comments, I would highly suggest to turn it off because it might already broke your app before, so better don't do that. Yep, also look at uCloud for there. It's worth to remove that auto minify, like uh, improve, prettyfy, whatever HTML, especially for Nuxt applications. But let's have a look at the playground and what's happening here. In the view playground, link as usual in the description, I've created a little fragment component, also known as component with multi roots. So not just one element as a root element. This is possible since viewpoint three. In viewpoint two, this was not possible except with a little plugin or addition there, but this is in the core and works. And in my app view, I decided to just loop over it and render hundred of these components. Well, we could also reduce it to 10 or Maybe two. Doesn't matter much. The important part is how that looks like when it's rendered. And luckily, the view single file component playground under play.vue.js.org provides us with an SSR view here. And as you've already guessed it, maybe, there we go. We see it. We see this interesting square bracket comment once again. Because it's used, for example, when using multi root components like the fragment component. So here we see one use case of them. And it's there because Vue then can easily identify, oh, okay, these are the elements that belong to a component that will make hydration a bit easier. I have like a delimiter to where to start and where to stop. So I don't have to do more search than necessary or maybe even the mistakes. And if we take a look at the app.view and how this is rendered, it's a bit longer here. We see it once again though in line 15. And that happens before SSR render list. So before that v4. And here is the same idea. Okay, we render a bunch of components. We could also just render, let's say, uh, one um, above here that just do, does exactly the same. And then the list of components. And we see it's only belonging to that v4. Because nobody stops you from putting a few components below and uh, after that v4, but we still need some kind of delimiter. So also v4s are rendered in so-called fragment mode. And well, we have that start and stop sign here. And same applies, for example, to slots and a few other occasions. So the important part is here, please, we need them. We should not remove them. But now we say, oh, okay, that's not that nice. What can we do instead? Well, what we could do instead, for v4, not that much. But if we take a look at the fragment component, what we could do is we say, look, we don't make it a fragment component. We just put a div in front of it, right? Like we, we wrap it. It's not a multi-root component anymore and it's gone. But is it better? The answer to that is no, it's absolutely not better because now, well, we got rid of two component nodes, but 
Now we have a div node, which is also a DOM element. So if you render that component 100 times, maybe even 1,000 times, okay, maybe you shouldn't, but... I think no matter what, uh, enjoy everything in moderation. Still like a couple of hundred times on the page, these are like a couple of hundred more elements than needed. And of course, also it could break the style that might rely on, okay, there's straight away a P element as the child and not like as a grandchild, same for the button that we are under the fragment component. So, nah, not a good idea. Keep the comments and I would even say I encourage to use fragment components if you don't need these unnecessary DOM elements. So here, very important, these comments are not a bad thing. And whoever is worried about, okay, they add to the, the kilobyte amount, like to the, the size of the file, yes and no. So if we take the raw file size, yes, they do. But so the diff elements. So not really good comparison. And if we even consider what's standard nowadays, text encryption like gzip or Brotly, then, well, all these comments will be compressed into one single representation and it's insignificant. So the good part is the comments are a good thing. They won't hurt your site performance and they're actually necessary to improve your application and to make it work. Also, if possible, use fragment components to avoid having unnecessary diff or general DOM elements. And yeah, next time you see them, you might not wonder what's that weird square bracket, but okay, there's my fragment component. Now I can, I don't know, debug it, let's say. And that's it. Now you know what that square bracket components do, what fragments are, how they work, and why they're so useful. I hope you tune in again in the next episode, which comes as usual every Friday, every week. No breaks until now. Um, yeah, have a good time. Questions as usual, put them in the comments. See you soon and happy hacking. Bye bye.